Hello everyone, I am Ron and I am the Game Design Instructor for the Academy of Entertainment Arts over at Dixie Hollins High School. If you are one of my students, it's Mr. Flowers to you, and welcome to this video tutorial. Good evening. In this tutorial we're going to go over uh, room transitions and how they work. Uh, all a room transition is, is a transition between different rooms. So I have a basic platformer set up here. If you don't, have, don't know how a basic platformer works, I recommend checking out my simple uh, platform tutorial on YouTube here. Um, you can also check out pretty much any platformer or side scroller or RPG style kind of game for this because the transitions they all work kind of the same way. So here's my room set up and um, I have a door here and if I go to the door we have this kind of fade out, and then we have a fade in, and then I have a new room, and I can kind of navigate this new room, and I have a door. I can go back through the other door, so it doesn't matter which door I go through. And th it's just two rooms that loop together, so this room goes to this one, and this one to that one. Okay, so what do you need for this project? Well, let me go ahead and close this. Um, you will need these sprites here, these four sprites. A player sprite, a door, a object to represent your warp, and a sprite for a wall to collide with. Uh, in the description you can download the project file. Uh, you'll get these sprites and some basic objects. Uh, so some things I'm not going to cover in this video are how the camera works, because that's not for this tutorial. We're, we only care about the room transitions. If you want to look at how cameras work, you can check out my upcoming video on how cameras work, or you can check out uh, Sean Spaulding's video. He has a couple that go really in depth on cameras and the matrices and all that good stuff. So you can check out his video work as well for that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you really need. We need some rooms. So I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, project file that you will have. So I have room transition two here. Let's go ahead and open that one. And this is what you'll start off with if you download the project file. You'll get these sprites, and you will end up with uh, these objects already created. And if you want, you can kind of dig through and see how they work. But I don't want to go into depth on remaking the same thing over and over again. Um, so what we need is we need some rooms here. And I'm going to delete the two rooms that are already here. Uh, when you get the project file, there won't be any rooms, so you just have to create them. So under Rooms here, I'm just going to right-click and create a new room. Here's my room uh, 0. And for this, I need a wall object. So I'm going to drag my wall object in. And I can put it anywhere I want. I'll put it here. If you hold down the Alt key, you can drag out walls wherever you like them to be. So I'm just going to drag out a few. Try to make this a little bit different. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Sure. How tall is my player? I'll drag my player in just so I can get a good idea. Yeah, that'll work. There we go. There's my player. I'll just put him over here somewhere. Let's block off this so I can't fall out of the world. There we go. And I'm going to drag in my door. You don't need a door. You can keep these open if you like, but I'm going to put a door in here. Um, sure, I'll, I'll put the door right there. And then I'll put this door right there. Works for me. Let's put a cover on the door. That way I just can't enter it from anywhere. Sweet. All right, and let's go ahead and give this a test play. So I'll play it. Here's my little platformer. 
Finish the door. Wee. If you notice that you appear on top of the door, you can change that by affecting the depth of the object. So if I go into my object door here, um, let's go ahead and do a create event. You say uh, initialize variables. I'll do a depth um, and right now I'm going to do a depth of positive one just so you can see what depth does. Depth affects what objects are on top of other objects in the game. So your player has a depth of zero by default and any object with a positive depth, so this is a po the door is a positive one, and the player is a positive or has a uh, zero. So positive numbers go into the screen, and negative numbers come out of the screen. So to guarantee that an object is on top of the other, um, you can give this a negative value. So I do negative one, the door will appear on top of the player. There is a stack order, so any object created at the same level. Let's say they all have a depth of zero. The newest object gets the highest uh, position. So like I added my player before I added the door. So the newer object, what happens is like the player is at the top of the stack and then the door is at the bottom of the stack. Anything at the bottom of the stack is what appears on top, basically. Uh, it's called first in, last out. But that's not too important. Okay, so that's how the uh, depth of the door works. And then we'll go into the uh, the warp here. So I'm going to right click on objects. I'm going to create a new object. I'm going to call this object warp. And I'm going to assign this my warp object. So grab this, grab him. Get that ready to go. And let's set up the other room. I'm going to right click on rooms, create new room. Let's set up the other door so we can go in and out. Um, I want this one to appear here. I'll go get these two off. Put the door in. So there we go. And what we want to do is we want to place our warp objects over our door. At the moment, our doors aren't going to work. But I'll go ahead and place those in. So wherever you want the door to actually affect. So if you wanted the player to transition immediately, you could put this over the front of the door or over the back of the door. To get the effect that I'm walking in the door, I will put it over the back of the door. That one, I'll go into room zero. I'll do the same thing. This door and this door. To get that semi-translucent effect on the uh, object here, all I did is in the sprite, if I go to edit sprite here, and then in the layers, I right click on my layer, edit properties, and then there's an opacity setting here that you can either increase or decrease to uh, affect that. It just makes it nicer so that when you put it over the object you're colliding with, you can kind of see the object. All right, and then I'm going to BOCD, and I'm going to put my warp above my um, my camera object. Not that it matters. I just like having my system objects below my um, other stuff. Not that it matters, though. So 
inside of my um, warp object here, I'm going to come down to events and open that up. I'm going to do a create event. So create. What we need for our warp gate is a, a target room. So we're going to say initialize variables. We need a target room. And that needs to go to something. Right now, there's no room to go to, so I'll just say none. You can also use the uh, the none. Um, I think Game Maker has a um, of one called no one, which um, equals a negative four. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to say none, so there's no object there. And then we need a target x position. I'll set that to zero, and a target uh, y position. Set that to zero. Because right now this object has no nothing assigned to it. This is just what we need for when it's created. And then inside of here, we need to um, set up a step event. So we will say step. We'll do update warp. And this is mostly going to be a collision event. You could create a collision event or on collision event. I prefer to write them by hand, so I'm just going to do um, if place meeting uh, x and y, and then the object that we're looking at would be the object player, so bj underscore player. If we collide with the player, then we're going to set the uh, the room. Uh, we'll say go to, and that's going to be our target room. So whatever value target room gets, that's the room we're going to go to. And then we're going to set our player's uh, x position. So object player dot x will be whatever our target x is. So target x, and then object player dot y will be target y. So whenever we touch a uh, room or touch one of the the door warp thingies, it's going to get the room that we're going to go to and where we're going to show up. And how we're going to get these is by modifying the individual um, instances of our warp object. So let's do that. Let's jump down into our room. And in here, let's uh, just double click on one of these uh, door warp instances here. So this is object warp. And every instance of an object gets its own creation code. So like this is the main object, and then these are copies of that object. So they get a copy of the parent code, and then they get their own stuff. So if I hit creation code, you can see we have nothing in here. I'm going to say uh, target room is going to be uh, room 1, because that's the name of the next room I want to go to. And then my target x. Um, I don't know what I want it to be just yet, so I'm just going to put a 0 on there and target y. Uh, I don't know that's going to be yet, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to copy this just so I have it, so I don't have to retype it again. And let's go into the next room. So next room is room 1. So if I go in, so if I go back to room 0, if I go into uh, this door, I should be coming out of this door. Now, for the sake of simplicity, it's easier if the door that you're uh, coming out of is in the same plane as the door that you uh, are entering, but it doesn't have to be. It just makes it a little bit uh, easier on you. Um, so when my player comes out of this door, we don't want the player to appear on this part of the door because that would send us back into the other room. So we're going to have the player appear... Um, outside the door. So to figure out where the player is going to be out here, you can hover your mouse over and kind of get the X and Y locations here. But I find it's easier if we just drop the object in. So I'll drag my player object in and set him where I think he's going to be. If I click on him, he gets this uh, instant ID number and then you have the X and Y locations right there. So he will appear at 160 in the X and 672 in the Y. So if I uh, keep those numbers in my brain here. So that's 160 and then 672. Go back to room 0. Go 
come back to this object code, and I'll do target X is going to be 160, and then my target Y will be 672. Is that right? I think so. Double check. Yeah, 672. So there we go. And if I collide with that, I walk over here and I collide with that, boop, I come out. It doesn't work on the reverse because we haven't set it up. You can see if I try to go back in, I get an error because we have not set up these other doors yet. So I'm going to go ahead and abort that and close the creation code of this door. I'm going to set up the other door now. So this one, um, I'm going to double click on this, open its creation code, and I'm just going to paste in the code that I had before. And now I need the X and Y location of the door that I'm going to come out of. So let's go to room one. And I'll open, a, I'll put the player here. That's going to be 864 and 416. Jump back to room zero. That's 864 and then 416. Let's go ahead and test that. Boop. There we go. So I come out of that spot right there. Nice. Now let's go the reverse. I'm going to put my player here. So when I'm coming out of the other door, I'm going to arrive at this location. And that location is 864 and 672. Uh, whatever yours are, uh, make sure you're using your numbers, not mine, because it might be different. So 864, 672. Go to room one here. I'll double click on this guy. Creation code. And this time we're going to room zero. So room zero. Uh, what was that, 864 and 672? 864, 672. Let's go ahead and double check. 864, 672. 864, 672, yep. Let's go ahead and try that door. So when I go through, and I have two copies of my character, that's what you're seeing there, and I go through this one, that works. Sweet. Let's go ahead and modify that. So what we saw there was two copies of the character, and the reason for that is I actually have two instances of my character. I have the one instance um, right here, and room zero, and then I have the one that I'm using to measure in room one, and I left it in, so we ended up seeing two copies of him. Just make sure that we delete him when we don't need it. I no longer need him, so I'll go ahead and delete him. And then this door needs to connect to the other one, so this one, let's open its creation code, paste that back in, it's going to room zero. And I need to know its X and Y location, so I go back to room zero. And if I go through that door, I should come out this door. And this door is, um, let's put our player there. That is 160, 352. Let's go back to this. That's 160 and 352. So there I go. And now my rooms work. Yay. Now the one thing you might notice is um, it's a little bit jarring. When you go through one door, 
there's this pop and you see the other room kind of load in and um, that's kind of annoying so what we're going to do is add a fade that creates a delay between um, that popping of the two rooms loading up because what happens is this room gets deleted the moment we go to the next room and then this room gets loaded um, but that transition is a little bit uh, jerky on the eyes so what we're going to do is make a fade in fade out effect uh, I just want to cover one particular error you might run into if you're going through your door and you're getting an error where it says it can't find the player that just means your player is also being destroyed between rooms so let's uh, close this stuff let's open up our object player here and you can see that on mine it is set to persistent what persistence does is it makes it so that my player does not get deleted between rooms if I uncheck persistent and I try to go through a door we will get the error that some of you may be experiencing which is if I go through boop, and there's no player right so you know, I, in this case I ended up with no player because my player got deleted but if you uh, do that and you end up with no player or you get an error that says it can't find the player uh, just make sure your player is set to persistent and then you will exist in both areas so let's create a, uh, a new object here we're going to call this object game so obj for game I'm OCD I'm going to put my game above my camera we need an object game is we need to make sure that it is also set to persistence because we don't want this to be deleted between rooms usually in our game object we set up um, the states of your game so if you're in a start menu or you're in some sort of like HUD menu or whatever it go kind of goes here um, so I'm gonna do a create event and in here we're gonna do um, initialize variables and the first variable, the first variable we need is the uh, something to handle our game state. So our state is going to be uh, whatever state our game is in, whether we're in like a start menu or uh, the beginning of the game or some sort of transition. So our first state is going to be in game. Uh, you can write this lowercase. Uh, I prefer writing these capital so that I know that I'm using this as a constant of some sort. And then I also need an alpha value, so alpha is equal to one. All an alpha is is um, it controls the the opacity of your of objects in your game. So a value of one is opaque or solid, and an a value of uh, zero is fully transparent. And we're going to use this to create a fade in and fade out effect because. The background of our game by default is black, so as we gradually ramp our opacity down to zero, our objects will naturally fade to black, which is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and open back to our events here, and we'll add a step event. In the step event, we are going to set up our switch. So we're going to do uh, update game and we're going to control our game state. We're going to say switch and this will swap between cases for our state. So open bra brace, closing brace. Inside here we're going to do case and you can do a case based on a number if you want but I'm going to do based on a string. So I'm going to say um, in game because that's what we start off as based on our create event. And I'm going to do a break. You always want to break your cases. If you don't break your case, um, what's going to happen is the system will try to keep running this even if you're in the next case. So our state started off as in game. So I want to make sure that I am starting off as in game here. And all I'm going to do here is say um, set alpha value. I'm going to say draw set alpha is going to be 1. So whenever we're inside of our game, so if we're inside the game state, 
the alpha will be set to 1. However, when we enter a door, we will then transition into the enter to the next room state, and then we will uh, adjust our alpha value. So I'm going to do case in room transition enter. Now you can name these anything you want. You could say just transition enter or door transition or whatever. You can name these whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Just try to use a consistent uh, naming convention. I'm going to do a break here. And I'm going to say uh, alpha. So we're going to do set alpha value. I'm going to do alpha. And since our alpha starts at 1, everything's solid. I want to count down. So I'm going to do minus equals 0 0.05. Where you, if I could type today. So what this will do is every step, this alpha value will subtract 0.5 from itself. And then we're going to say if alpha is less than or equal to 0, then our alpha will be set to 0. And what this will do is if it's less than 0, then it's going to guarantee that it will be zero so that we're not, you know, negative 35 or whatever. That way, when we go into the next transition, we're starting off at zero and the, uh, the fade in and fade out value will be consistent. After we set our alpha again, we're going to now go to the next state. So state will then be in room transition exit. So now we're exiting the transition for the room. So this one this part handles the fade out part, and the next part will handle the fade in. And then finally, we want to pass our alpha value into our draw set alpha function. So we're going to say uh, draw set alpha. And then inside of the value, I'm going to just put the alpha variable. And this will update based on whatever is inside this variable. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, paste this in. Be careful where you're pasting stuff. Uh, make sure your braces are good. So like this brace ends at the bottom here. Each one of these cases, you know, it's its own brace, its own set. Kind of treat these as their own entity, more or less. And we're going to be at this last one. It's in room transition. This will be exit. So exit. And we were counting, from this one we were counting from 1 to 0. In the exit transition, we're going to be counting from 0 to 1. So we're going to be adding. So plus equals 0 0.05. And then if alpha is greater than or equal to 1, then alpha will be set to 1. And then our state is going to go back to the game. So this will be in game. And then our set alpha is still there. We could pass this value right here since alpha does start off at 1. But I want to guarantee that this is 1 no matter what. So let's say the we're in one of these transitions and for whatever reason um, it got to... 0.95 by time the transition finished, then we would have a very subtle uh, darkness over the game. We don't want that. So I just want to guarantee that when we're back in the game that our alpha is uh, set to 1. Okay, so that should handle the fade in and fade out. We need to set this up instead of our warp. So when we touch our warp, we get uh, into this case here. So if I go to our warp and go into step event, before I add this in, I want to show you what will happen if we don't. So let's go to our room here. So room 0. And we'll just add our game object into here. We'll hit play. And if I walk to my door, nothing happens, right? 
I go in one door and out the other. There's no transition, no fading. The reason for that is we need something to tell the game object when to switch uh, states. So let's do two things. Let's report our current state value to the screen, and then we will um, fix the transition. Let's come back into the game object. In the step event, da, 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 let's go to add event, and we'll do a draw GUI. What a draw GUI does is it draws to the uh, to the screen no matter what you're doing. So if you have a camera or a different view set up, it'll always draw this directly to the screen, and it'll be wherever your player is. So I'm going to do um, draw debug info. I'm going to do draw text. I'll say 10 pixels in the X, and we'll start off at 12 down because 12 is the uh, font size that we're using. And I'll do uh, a string. So this is going to be our state for whatever our game is in. Go ahead and leave a little space here. That way there's a gap between the word state and then the value that we're going to have. And then we're going to add the string to itself, so plus string, and this will convert the value of our state to text. So state plus parenthesis and then that. And then we're going to do, we'll also do a transition for alpha. So draw text 10, so 24, that's 12 pixels away from 12, plus alpha plus string alpha. And we'll do the room. So draw text 10, 20, uh, 36, if I can type, room plus string room. Okay. So we should see our current state, what the current alpha value is in the current room, all drawn to the screen we play. And if I jump in there, There they are. You can see our current state. We are in game. The alpha is set to 1 and the room is 0. And if I go through, you'll see that the game state does not change between uh, entering and exiting a door. Neither does the alpha, but the room does. The room does change from room 1 to 0 and back and forth. So let's go back into our warp object. We need our warp object. After we touch it, we need it to tell us to uh, go to the in-room transition enter. So above this go to statement here, we're going to make a new if statement. We're going to say if object game dot alpha is greater than zero. So if our alpha value is greater than zero, that means there's still some alpha to be transitioned, then we are going to be in the state of uh, entering the door. So object game dot state will then be set to in room transition enter. So as long as this part is true, as long as our alpha value is greater than zero, we will then be in this transitional piece. Else, open brace, let's go ahead and wrap this, closing brace, and I'll tab this in. Else, we will be transitioning to the next room. Okay? And then what happens is, so this will trigger, it'll send us into this transition, so our state will change to this part, and then our step event for our game will take over, it'll run this code, and then send us to this part, which will run this code, and then send us back to game. Okay? Let's go back to our warp here. And let's try this. Let's see if this works. Go ahead and hit play. And now when we hit the door, we'll see a few things happen. We should see the room fade out. 
the room fades in. And if you look at the top here, you can see that what, uh, what state you're in. So you'll see it goes to enter, exit, and then back to game. And you can see your alpha value fading out and fading in. Counting down, counting up, and then we're in game. The thing you want to be careful though, right now, there's no collision behind our doors. Which means that if we are walking, we can still walk while the game is transitioning. And the problem with that is we can actually walk off of the game. You can see like my character disappeared. I fell off into infinite space. We don't want that to happen. You can solve that with two possibilities. One, let's go back to our room here. There's nothing beyond our room. So if I walk through the door, I can actually fall into infinity and I can't get back. We can put collision boxes here. We can put wall there so we can't exit the, the scene. Or we can set it up to where the game does not allow us to move while the uh, tra transition is happening. And that's pretty easy to solve. All we got to do is modify the player's uh, values here when he enters. So let's go ahead and go to Object Player, uh, Step Event. And inside the Step Event, you can see the Update Player Code. So our walking, this is our movement code, this is our jumping, this is the gravity value and then our horizontal collisions and all that good stuff. All this should only happen when we're in the game state. If we're in any transitional state, this will not happen. So let's go up to uh, just under the update player. So I'm going to make a new spot. I'm going to say if object game dot state. And we're going to use two equal signs to, to make sure we're doing a comparison. So if object game state is equal to in game, then so open brace all the way down to the bottom, make a new spot, closing brace, and I will select everything from the y plus y value up to the if keyboard check. I'll just go ahead and tab that over. So this shows ownership, so this if statement will run this code and then it'll exit. Okay. So this body of code will only run as long as we're in a game state, and this will prevent us from accidentally walking off the screen. If I hit play, we can see that. So here I am. And as I walk through, you'll see my character pauses, and then now I can move again. Yay. Fantastic. We have a nice fade out, fade in. And then one other thing I want to cover is as we uh, go to the door, you can actually see the collision uh, piece there, that light green thing. Let's go into our object warp here. And I'm going to uncheck the visibility option. This will make this object not visible while the game is running. Go ahead and run it one more time. There we go. All right, so I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you on setting up your room transitions. In the next video, we're going to go over the basic setup for cameras. And I will see you guys next time.